Hey guys, uh, this is my video response to my AMA request uh, for Reddit, and tonight I'm going to be answering the top 10 questions that I got um, based on the number of upvotes, so um, I'm sorry that I'm not doing any more than 10, um, that's just for tonight. If I can, I will do more in the future and make another video. Um, I've just been really busy and really tired lately, so this is all I'm doing tonight. Anyway. Um, the first question is, what advice would you give a high school student fighting to remove a chaplain from a school? Um, I would first recommend going to the school, talking to them. I know in the comment you said that you have already done that, um, and I know that a lot of times schools can give you the runaround with all that. Totally understand. Um, you should first approach them, talk to them, ask them to remove it nicely. Um, if they say no, if they're giving you a lot of trouble, you should probably contact either the ACLU, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, or um, Secular Student Alliance. All three of those organizations can help you um, not only begin the process of fighting the administration of the school, but um, they can give you legal advice as well. So I would definitely look into contacting one of those organizations. And if you're having one of these problems, you can definitely contact me. I work for the Center for Inquiry on campus, and um, I'm a volunteer high school coordinator, and I would love to help you guys with this. So um, you can email me. I'll put my email below. Um, the next question, number nine, was how do you see your atheist secular activism changing and affecting your life as you transition from high school to college? Um, I know that activism is a major part of my life and it will always be. Uh, I'm hoping that no matter where I go, no matter where I end up, I'll um, always be an activist and um, I can imagine myself going from high school activism to college activism and whether that means starting a college group or just becoming a part of an already existing one um, I definitely want to stay active, I want to stay involved, I want to be in the atheist community and I want to be helping out so um, I don't expect too much to change but uh, I do expect the I guess education for myself to go on um, are you going to continue to speak at conferences and participate in organizations like SSA Definitely. Um, I would love to speak anywhere I'm asked to. I've already done several talks at um, the Center for Inquiry, the Secular Student Alliance, um, the Freedom from Religion Foundation. I went to a dinner for the Rhode Island ACLU where I gave a talk, and um, I'm going to be speaking in Alabama on Friday, and uh, I'll be at Reason Rally. So those are going to be tons of fun. And um, I definitely want to give back to to uh, the organizations that have supported me through all of this. So I'll definitely be a part of that forever and ever. Um, how does being that atheist girl fit into your self-identity? Many of us consider ourselves atheists, but not enough to get involved in activism. What would be your biggest argument for others to get involved? Um, that atheist girl, you know... I would definitely say that being an atheist is a big part of my identity, mostly because I'm an activist. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, I go shoving atheism down anyone else's throat. Um, I just feel passionately about activism and specifically activism for atheism. And so um, I guess it is part of my identity, and I, I fully embrace that. I don't see a problem with that. And um, my biggest argument for getting involved would be that if you have a problem with the world, if you see something that you don't like about it, you should be doing what you can to make it better. Um, the world isn't perfect, we all know that, and we all have issues, so we should all be working together to try to make it better. And one way that you can do that is by speaking out. You can write, you can join these organizations, you can become part of a local group or one in your school. And there's so many ways to get involved. You can go on to some of the websites, and there's forums and everything. Just look around. There's certainly something that you can do to help out. Um, the number eight question. How did you feel when you became what is essentially a mini-celebrity amongst atheists? Uh, I don't know if I would say celebrity or even mini-celebrity, but um, I think it's definitely been a learning experience for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm flattered that I've gotten all this support, and um, I, it's certainly not what I expected. I really did think going into this that it would be 
so quick, just easy resolve. I would go to the meeting, very first com school committee meeting, um, back in November, last November, and uh, it would be like all done. I would just say, guys, you know, it's a prayer in a public school. Obviously, that doesn't belong. And the grown ups would be like, yeah, obviously, it's, you know, separation of church and state. That makes sense. And they'd just come right down. But uh, it turned into this instead, which is just crazy. So, um, mini celebrity, I mean, I, I just feel like I have a lot of support, and that's awesome. Um, has any public servant spoken out in your support? Uh, the governor did, um, Governor Lincoln Chafee. He came out a couple days ago when the decision was made, and um, he said that he agreed with the judge's decision to remove the prayer, and I was really thankful for that. He didn't have to do that, but he did, so that's, that's really cool. Um, what happened in the court? Was the judge like, well, this thing here is violating this law here. I think we're done here, or what? Um, funny, actually. The judge, when I first found out that he was elderly and conservative, I was a little bit scared because I thought he might be religious and might want to keep the prayer there and everything. But he actually turned out to be a really great judge, and I noticed when we went to the hearing in early October, he was just listening so closely, and um, he was really interested, and he was taking it very seriously, and you could just tell from, you know, the way he just absorbed ev all the information the lawyers were giving him that he was just contemplating everything, and um, it took him a while to make the decision, but he did a great job, and he wrote like 40 pages, so I'm really, again, thankful to that judge. And um, in court that day, I remember one of my fondest memories from this whole experience was when um, Joe Kavanaugh, who is the lawyer who was arguing for the prayer, said something like, oh, well, the majority of the people in the area at the time wanted to have the Christian prayer up. And um, the judge in response said, well, I wonder how you would feel if it was a prayer to Buddha. And I was shocked, but I was also thrilled, and um, the lawyer was kind of taken aback. I don't think he really expected the judge to say that. And, um, yeah, he just turned out to be a really cool judge, and he wrote that I was an articulate, courageous young woman in his decision, and that was, I was so flattered. It was just awesome for him to say that. Um, here's another one. We often hear about people who stand up and become social pariahs. I'm wondering how much support you have locally within this school and your community. We see tons of idiot kids flaming away on the internet, but I really want to know how are school staff acting? Are they mostly supportive, and is your family getting a hard time because of this? Um, to answer the first part um, about how the school staff is supportive of me, um, there have been a few teachers in the school who were kind of supportive of me but didn't really want to talk about it too much because they were kind of worried that they would get involved in everything. Um, for the most part, the teachers were told not to talk about it at all. The city was under a gag order because of the lawsuit, and um, I think they were nervous that there would be more controversy and it would get messy. So they told the teachers not to talk about it, and only a few told me that they agreed with me. And my family, I think they get a little bit. I know my sisters had to deal with some stuff at school. But um, for the most part, I think it's really just focused at me, which I'm actually gl I'm glad for because my family doesn't deserve to deal with any of that. It was me who decided to do this, and I'd much rather they stayed out of this. Um, have you had any friends who were totally on your side when you were on your mission to get this removed, who totally turned on you afterward for fear of ridicule harassment themselves. Um, no, I don't think so. Just about everybody who's come out supporting me has stayed by my side through the whole thing, and they've been great to me. I was really lucky to have supportive friends from the very beginning, and, I mean, this has been a process, so I think any friends that um, I would have lost, I would have lost by now. So... I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful for that, too. I find myself saying, I'm really thankful for it after every question, but I am. I'm very thankful. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing this on my phone. Um, how are you dealing with all of the threats and hatred that are directed at you and your family now? Um, how am I dealing? I would say I'm dealing pretty well. 
Uh, I think the first response when you read something as hateful as some of the comments I've been getting is just shock. And you're like, wow, are these people really saying that? I mean, I know these kids, and they, they're in my classes, and they know me. They know I'm not a bad person or a freak or whatever it is they're calling me. So how can they possibly be saying these nasty things when they know I would never say that about them? And, um, well, it does kind of upset me. I see their attacks as pretty petty and um, immature, kind of beneath me, to be completely honest. I... I don't really want to involve myself in too much of that because I think it's ridiculous. I think anybody who who wants to get involved this late in the game and just call me names after I've already won, I mean, you're not doing any good. You're not going to change my mind. You're going to change the judge's decision. So it's really just pointless to even give them the time of day. But, I mean, it does hurt. I won't lie. It does hurt a bit. Um, how often do you get support in secret from people in your community? Um, support in secret, hmm, I mean, like I said before, there are a few teachers who wanted to give me support, but who couldn't really give a lot of support because of the gag order, and because of, um, they actually were fearful of their jobs. I know there are a lot of teachers who would have liked to come out and support me, but if they did, they could have gotten in some trouble, and, I mean... It's all kind of related, politics and your job and everything, especially in a very closely knit community. So I, I think a lot of people felt, wished they could have come out and supported me, but really couldn't. Um, and I guess there are a few kids in the school who kind of support me, but didn't really want to make a big deal out of it, just because, again, it's controversial. And the last question, the top question that got 134 points, was if you knew then what you know now, would you still go through with it? 100% yes. Um, this has been the most hellish experience of my life, easily, but it's also been the best. I've learned the most and I've made the most friends and I've, well, while it's been very difficult at times, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and um, I now know so much more about the history of this country, and about who I am, and about um, the atheist community, and it's been so rewarding. I feel like all the negative that's come from this can't even begin to counter the positive. So overall, I think it ends up being a much better experience than a negative one. And that's all the questions. So if you have another question that I wasn't able to ask, I'm really sorry. Hopefully I'll get around to making another video soon. And um, again, you should try to contact me. I'm pretty busy and I have a lot of messages to go through. But if you're, especially if you're dealing with something like what I'm going through, you should really try to get in touch with me because I can. I would love to help with it. And um, I'm pretty friendly and I really just love talking to supportive people. So. Get in touch with me, and I love you guys. Bye.